I guess it's it's been a little bit since we've seen you. The last time we saw you, unfortunately, it, it didn't play out like you wanted to. But how are you feeling after that fight? You, you came into that fight with so much energy, so much enthusiasm, and you seem like you're on another level. Has that continued forward since that fight? Yes, I've been training nonstop since that fight. I was very disappointed it didn't go my way. You know, I thought it was really close, but. Um, you know, I sat down with my coaches and trainers and discussed what I needed to do. I needed to get stronger. I needed to better my wrestling so I could get it to the ground and jujitsu her. You know, that's my goal. But really, I want to win it any way I can. So I've been training nonstop these past seven months, and I'm really excited to show her and myself and everybody what I can do. And it seemed going in there that your striking seemed on another level than when we saw. So I assume that that's continued as well. I mean, how, how, how are you feeling on the striking? It sounds like you... Your jiu-jitsu is always going to be there, but it seems like, is, is striking still a major focus as well that you've been trying to prove upon? Yes, my striking, my striking has leveled up. Now, I don't think I'll become a K1 champion anytime soon, but, you know, I'd like to show that, you know, I've improved in my sta by my standards. Well, let's jump over to your opponent. You know, when, when you look at Barb, Barb's uh, a legend in her own right, but break her down for us. Where is she dangerous and what sort of things are you expecting coming in to the cage? One reason I'm so excited about fighting Barb is that she's great everywhere. She's very well-rounded. Her striking is good, her wrestling is good, you know, her ground game is good. So I'm pretty much thinking, what's she going to do here? Well, what would I do here? She'll probably do the right thing so I can just, you know, see her as, you know, my rival. My, this epic challenge for me, you know. So um, I know that, you know, I've sat down with my coach, John Wood, and I can see she has some tendencies. So, you know, I have a, a kind of game plan that I just have to be aware of things she does. and. Just, you know, I've, I win my fights when I do me, and I focus on what I want to do, so I shall proceed and execute the plan. How, how long has Barb kind of been on your radar as a fighter? Because you guys have both been doing this for, for a little bit now. I've been wanting to rematch Barb for about seven years now, right, ever since she beat me with the yeah. rear naked choke. So, um, yeah, a long time, you know, and she was the Invicta champion. So it's, she's always been a goal of mine. So you'd see her in Invicta events and be like, kind of give her a little side eye. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of disappeared for a few years, did, you know, yeah. so I really haven't seen her around. But, um, yeah, I've been, uh, been on the lookout. <laughs> did you guys build any sort of relationship in the house together during the show? We did. We did chat a bit in the house uh, on Tough, 20, uh, Tough 26. We both got up kind of early, so we tended to have breakfast the similar time and she went swimming and I did my yoga we chatted a bit and she recommended a book to me and yeah so we, we became friendly so does that when you come into a fight does that uh, maybe take a little bit nerve and pressure off because it, it is somebody that is not the boogeyman across the cage but somebody that you've seen and, and have some sort of a relationship with um, every opponent feels different every fight feels different um, the only person in my whole fighting career who's ever tried to like Evil Eye Me was Vanessa Porto, and years ago, and I think it was Fatal Femme Fighting, she looked at me and was like, the belt or something, but I mean, I'm pretty much friendly with everybody, so I never really feel anything like that. Yeah, I can't imagine anybody really trying to mean bug you. I mean, you're always there smiling. It's impossible. <laughs> How did your book come about? Which book? Uh, the, the, the inspirational one that I see on Twitter. Okay. Uh, I wrote two books. One is uh, about my memoirs, Living in Japan, and another one is a book, uh, Mental Training by the Happy Warrior, How to Be Positive. And I've gotten a lot of questions from fans about, oh, how do you stay so positive? And I thought, well, my mom raised me to think positively, and I have various techniques that I use. So I composed a book with 10 chapters, and each chapter is a mental technique that I use to to change my way of thinking about a negative situation to see it positively. And then I uh, wrote maybe five or six scenarios in the workbook so that the reader has to think of how they would be more positive in that situation to train their minds. Which one of those would you say helps you the most in fighting, if you had to pick one? Um, probably see the silver lining, and also something else my coach John Wood says is, replace the negative thoughts. So pretty much, we can never stop ourselves from thinking something. If you say, don't think about that, you can't, you know? So when it comes in, you have to replace that thought with something else. So, oh, am I ready? Of course I'm ready. Uh, am I gonna get tired? You're not gonna get tired because blah, blah, blah. So, like that sort of thing. So you always replace these negative thoughts with positive thoughts, and that's helped me a lot in my fighting career ever since I joined Syndicate. What's more difficult, uh, the writing of the, of, of the book or, uh, or being in the office? 
talk to God. Walking to the cage and, and stepping in there is actually waiting for my turn is the most difficult and nerve wracking thing. So once I get in there, I'm I can I'm good to go. But like waiting is awesome. My turn, yeah, that's that's nerve wracking. What do you do while you're waiting? Are you watching the fight? Are you reading? Are you meditating? What What do you do while you're waiting to keep yourself upbeat and ready for the fight? I cycle. I cycle through pacing, listening to music, watching the fights, and I go back. I relax. I chat with my coaches, then I pace around some more, then I listen to Rob Zombie, then I watch some fights. <laughs> so I, I cycle through those things. How, how does somebody waiting for their next fight not get, let their adrenaline get up and, you know, so they dump before they get out to the cage? Is that ever a concern as a fighter? Mm -hmm. um, pretty much I use the mental process to you know, replace my negative thoughts and always think positively. And when I, I start getting too excited, you know, I, I pace around or I talk to my coaches or I try to like, just be very aware of how my mind works so that I can control my thoughts. Nico's kind of uh, taking a beating publicly because he hasn't earned the title yet. And, and Shevchenko has been kind of like knocking on that door. Um, how do you feel about the whole situation? Do you think, uh, are you surprised that she hasn't defended it yet? I heard that Nico had various health problems and um, I think, she wrote some things about them on Instagram, but it wasn't r really public knowledge, so people were just like, where is she? Right. As opposed to that being more explained. And then Shevchenko's doing what she's supposed to do and is trying to be vocal, and you know, it's a show business pretty much, so I mean, that's one part of it, but I think it was kind of, it's kind of unfair to like, hang her up to dry like that, because Nico is not afraid of anybody. She wants to fight, you know, we've, all of us Tufts 26 fighters have been waiting like seven months to fight, so um, I'm glad the fight is finally set, but. Yeah, she, she deserved to take a little break and heal her injuries. Would you have wanted to fight sooner? Or is this the appropriate time, about eight months since your last fight? I definitely wanted to fight sooner. Honestly, I've, I was asking the UFC in January, like, oh, when can I fight next? And I was trying to keep my weight low and be ready. So it's been a pretty long fight camp, just because I finally learned maybe in uh, April when I was fighting. So I wanted to fight sooner, but I'm, Again, I'm very happy and grateful to be in the UFC at all, and I'm happy to have a contract, so whenever they want to give me a fight, it's fine. Have they ever told you why, um, to me it seems like the women just don't fight as frequently. I see a lot of the women in the UFC complain that they're just waiting, like Angela Hill's been waiting, she finally got a fight. Have, has anyone ever explained that maybe there's just not enough spaces or, or any reasoning at all? The UFC works in mysterious ways. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they're thinking. I'm sure there's reasons, there are reasons, but I don't know. As a fighter, you know, if you have a bad day at work, you don't just go have another, go back to work the next day and kind of wash it out and have a good day. You've had to wait eight months to have your next day at work. How, does that cloud hang over you or is, or is there another way that you kind of like, wash that out and reset before this, uh, you know, as a fighter? Well, I get really bummed out and depressed if I don't have a plan of action, like if I don't know how to get better, or I don't know what I'm doing, but once I decide like, okay, I need to get stronger, so therefore I will execute this plan of conditioning, or oh, this sucks, so I need to get better, and then I start training and I make improvements in the gym, so then I can be excited about every day. You know, I can wake up like, oh, I did this yesterday, and today I'm gonna do this, and I just, I can feel really positive about my training. So now, for example, I, I feel great, I feel stronger, I feel more skilled, um, and it's been a great journey. Does it outweigh the loss, the, the steps to get to this fight, or do you have to get that next fight and that next win to, to, to get over that? Or is it the process that gets you over that? Uh, I'm not sure, but I know that um, the way I look at fighting and my feelings about martial arts play into that a lot. You know, I do martial arts for self-improvement and to prove to myself that I can do the techniques. So, you know, recently I've been able to do a few techniques I've never been able to do despite training them. And so I just feel so accomplished and happy with myself that... I just, I feel really, it's really gratifying. So yes, I do need a win for sure, and that's a little stressful, but you know, I, I um, enjoy the small victories as much as I can in training. What are some of those small techniques? That's a top secret. <laughs> You'll have to see in the fight.
<laughs> I know for me, I apologize, I didn't know about the writing thing, but one last thing, I know that you teach kids a lot is other avenues of books, say kids books or like fantasy, because you've always been a creative person and you do all the anime stuff. Have you ever, are, you, are, are there plans to do sci-fi writing, fantasy writing, kids writing, anything else in the future now that you're getting the process of being a writer down more? Yes, um, I have written some fantasy books in my youth. They're not great, so I probably have to edit them. I wrote a kid's book, and I sent it to my mom, and I said, Mom, what do you think? She's like, I don't know, honey, I'll have to think about it. So that kind of bummed me out a little bit. <laughs> um, but I need a publisher or somebody who can help me get it out there, you know, like my two books I self-published. And they're getting, you know, fans' attention, but they're not big scale yet. They're not in, you know, uh, stores, so I need a little guidance in that regard, but I'd, I'd love to keep, I'm going to keep writing for sure. That's great. The, I'm gonna, sorry, one more last one. The one that has to do with uh, positive thinking, the second book, have you been able to motivate any MMA fighters or anyone from the MMA community? Have they given you that feedback that they read the book? And uh, I believe I have gotten a few fighters uh, who bought my book and then gave me positive feedback on it and said that it, said that it helped them and, uh, in their lives. So I'm really happy to hear that kind of feedback. You know, that's one thing that I love about, you know, being a fighter and being in the public eye is that I can try to say good things and try to influence people in a positive way. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Roxanne. Thanks, Roxanne.